Hello dear students. So today is the third class of Central Orbit. Today the important part in our discussion is mainly stability of Central Orbit. So let us write that thing. Stability of Central Orbit. So today is the main discussion part. So if a particle describe an, describing an orbit be slightly disturbed <coughs> and it still continues to describe the path which does not deviate far from the original path, then the original orbit is stable, otherwise the orbit is unstable. So if we have some perturbation, after the perturbation, if the particle uh, is not deviate far from that original path, then the original orbit is stable, otherwise the orbit is unstable. Now we shall investigate the situation under which the circular orbit will no longer remain circular if slightly disturbed. The circular orbit in this case is says to be unstable. And <coughs> in other words, a small disturbance is always present in nature. We shall study if the circular orbit is stable or unstable under a given small disturbance. So let's illustrate. There is a problem, a particle describes a path which is nearly a circle about a center of force. The expression is, this force is given by mu e to, u to the power n at its center. Find the condition that this may be a stable motion. So let us have the diagram first. This is OX and this is the force. This is the position of the particle at any time t, position is r comma theta, so this is the direction of the force and force is given by this mu e to the power n. So we know that the differential equation of the orbit can be written as this is the force, so this is the differential equation of the orbit in polar form. And substituting this if we have this relation. If the path be nearly a circle of radius, this is our assumption, if the path be nearly a circle of radius 1 by c, that is u equal to c. We know that u is equal to 1 by r. So naturally, u is equal to c. So then from 1, we have h square is equal to mu c to the power n minus 3. So substituting and after some calculation, we have equation 3. Suppose the particle be slightly displaced from the circular path in such a way that h remains unaltered. So h is always constant. We have proved that in our previous classes. So we put u is equal to c plus x, where x is very small. Substitute in 3, we have an expression like this and after some expansion, this is a binomial expansion and higher order terms are neglected in this expression. So we finally, after some manipulation, we have this term, this, this is the expression. So we get the final differential equation after calculation. This is the differential equation of the path where k is equal to 3 minus n is a constant. Now, if this equation represents a SHM, simple harmonic motion, then the orbit is stable, otherwise unstable. We know that simple harmonic motion gives you a stable motion because it has a uh, maximum and minimum. So, let us study that thing. If k is greater than 0, then the differential equation will be this and we know that the corresponding general solution will be given by, this is the general solution. General solution is given by x is equal to c1 cos root over k1 k theta plus c2. c1, c2 are arbitrary constants. So therefore u is equal to given by c plus x. So c plus c1 into this. We know that at an apse du d theta is equal to 0. Already we have discussed in the previous class. So th this gives you sign of this is equal to 0. So k root over k theta plus c2 equal to m pi. m is equal to 0, 1, 2, etc. 
Hence, the solutions of the this last equation gives you the series of angles actually of this type, series of angles where theta one and theta two are the vector angles of two consecutive abscess. Next angle will be theta three and so on. So if you take the difference of these angles, then you have always all the differences will give you a value pi by root over three minus n, which is the apsidal angle, which is the apsidal angle. So this is the this is our one of the requirement. So you look at that. Now let us describe that. So what is the maximum and minimum value of u? You look at the expression of u. What is the maximum value and minimum value of this expression? So we know that the maximum and minimum value of cos theta is minus and uh, uh, plus plus minus one. So maximum value is one and minimum value is minus one. If you substitute, you will get c one c plus c one and c minus c one. So the motion is included between two uh, values, c minus c1 and c plus c1. Hence the motion is stable because motion is bounded. So our conclusion is, in this case, we are having a stable motion. But if you, in the case two, if you look at the case two, if k is equal to three minus n less than zero, then in that case, the differential equation becomes this and the general solution is this. There is a exponential functions. And we know that the exponential functions are uh, unstable, gives you unstable mo motion because as x increases, theta in x increases as theta increases, and the orbit does not continue to be nearly circular. So in this case, we have a unstable motion. And what is the case? Last case, k is equal to n minus uh, k is equal to zero. The apsidal angle becomes infinite. So it's quite easy to describe. Next, let us have a general case. If a particle describes a path which is nearly a circle about a center of force and the force is given by this mu phi u phi of u at its center find the condition that the motion is stable so you have instead of that function you have a function of u so how will you deal it or it may be another function no problem you go through the same process you write the differential equation again you apply nearly a circular circle of radius 1 by c after some manipulation you have h square similarly for the as the previous case and let u is equal to c plus x the small disturbance is x and you have this type of expression you have a function phi of c plus x and a binomial in negative binomial expansion so you have a taylor series expansion here and the binomial expansion but higher order terms are neglected so you have finally after some manipulation the differential equation is this again we can say that if that's uh, uh, if it follows shm if the differential equation then the equation will be stable so you will case you will do the cases as k greater than 0 k less than 0 and k equal to 0 so k naturally k gives uh, k greater than 0 will give you a apsidal angle of this type and the motion will be stable because you have to find out the apsidal angle the similarly you have theta 1, theta 2 are the consecutive apsidal angles and differences will give you this result as the previous case. So you can easily do that, the rest of the path. Now let us have a problem on this concept. On the stability of motion, let us have a problem. So the problem is the two particular masses, capital M and small m, are connected by a light string. The string passes through a, uh, uh, passes through a hole, small hole in the table and small m hangs vertically capital M describes a curve on the table which is nearly a circle whose center is the hole. Show that the apsidal angle of the orbit is M. Orbit of M is this. This is the apsidal angle and you have to prove this. So let us draw the diagram. This is the portion on the table. This is the capital M portion. Mass of this string portion is capital M. And there is a small hole O. And this is the string hangs vertically this is the portion whose mass is small m as this is a string so this is the tension acting this is the upward direction and this is the towards o so these are the tension and this and the uh, let op is r and l be the string length of the string total length of the string is r l so naturally this portion is r and this portion is l minus r and mg is acting vertically so what is the differential equation and it is given that m m follows a nearly a circular path so what is the differential equation of the path 
the differential equation of the path is this. Differential equation of the path described by M, capital M. And this is the force because we know F is force per unit mass. So ten T by capital M gives you the force per unit mass. So equation of motion M. M does not follow any uh, central orbit path because it hangs vertically. So naturally we will apply Newton's laws of motion on that. Equation of motion is given by this because Mg is in opposite direction of the tension. So you have the, we have this and finally we have M d2 or d2 is equal to T minus Mg. Now we know that U is equal to 1 by R. So first find out dr dt then d2 or dt2 is given by this. From 2 we have then expression for T tension unknown tension we find out putting in 1 we have this type of expression this is the differential equation and after arranging the differential equation we arrived at equation 3 if the path be nearly a circle of again we have the same assumption if the path be a nearly a circle of radius c u is equal to 1 by c so we after substituting in 3 we have the value of a square as this substituting again so finally after substituting a square we have the expression having u and c so this is the differential final differential equation now for slight displacement we can take u is equal to 1 by c plus x as usual x is very small perturbation so after substitution and binomial expansion and higher order terms are neglected we arrived at the differential equation as previous case we already proved in the two parts so we have the finally arrived at this type of differential equation where mu is absolutely positive because mu is 3m by capital M plus small m so we can write the differential equation of the we can write the general solution of the differential equation and also the cases in case one obviously this is greater than zero so we no, don't need to find out other cases we have only one case that is k greater than zero we write the differential equation as general solution and theta one theta two are the consecutive uh, and apsidal angles and we'll easily show that the apsidal angle is this so this is how you deal with the problems of stability of central orbit so today i finish my lecture here thank you all